that's uh, it's just harder to do because you've got to pick it apart before you can put it back together again. So, I, and hey, by the way, Grampy, good to see you. Um, and we're going to start in the second. But hey, Matt, what, what would fix that? Because I, I don't, I don't anticipate there being too many changes for the next version of this, right? I kind of feel it's pretty solid, and there might be some minor changes. But what's the best way for me to keep you in the loop? Is it to tell you every single change, or is it to turn on tracking in in a word doc? Like, what, what's the best way to keep you in the loop so you don't have to go and sniff out changes? Uh... From now on, I guess, if there's anything new, let me know. Okay. Um, so I'll be going through page by page, so I'm up to 42 at the moment. Okay. So most, of the pre- most of the previous pages are preamble. Yeah. Um, so, but then there's, then there's stuff that's contradictory because obviously we've got the new skills and yeah. the old skill in like the thing we've got. So, uh, and I haven't done the new skills, and that'll be a rewrite sort of thing. So, um, for the different skills, uh, and you know, do I pick the? Uh, I'm I'm wondering whether we we dump the um, uh, the uh, character sheet and make a character sheet that's like in five five pieces. Um, and you click it. The, the first one is just everyday stuff. The next one is what you're carrying. The next one is um, combat. So you've got all the buttons that are there. And then the character sheet could uh, could be really small. Is it because it's split into five different sheets? Does that make sense? <clears throat> you mean like so? With obviously you're talking about within roll twenty, but would you see yeah, that I'm being just, the? the but would you be in, like? Would you see the? Would it follow that? Like for the for the pen and paper version? Yeah. So, for example, the first page would just be the um, uh, personal data. So it might have each one of those things on, um, and then the second one might have all the skills on. So you could just you could click skills and then roll one of them. Okay. The page might have combat on. So when you're in combat. Instead of having loads of buttons at the top of the screen, you just click your character sheet open, and you've got all of the things for combat, including other stuff like because we've got so many buttons across the top now. Yeah, the, eventually they're going to go into two lines, which would be maybe a bit horrible. So we could have all the combat stuff because we're we're exacerbating what what you do in combat. So we've got charge and we've got uh, sprint, yep. um, apple, a whole bunch of other ones. Yeah. Um, so they could all go on the combat one and then you only need to keep the character sheet open because the reason people don't keep the character sheet open at the moment is oh, it's really huge. Um, just to fit it all yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that right? I mean, is that why you, you move it around? Or oh, sorry, is that why you don't have it open? Yeah. I don't have part. it open for two reasons. One, because it's kind of big, but also I don't know if it's just opera, but, um, just navigating the map too, because every time I have to zoom and keep moving, but I think that's more of an issue than okay. I know I am has the same thing because she's got a really small screen, she's just got a uh, Surface Pro or whatever, so, yep. So she finds even the dread one difficult. Um, but I was thinking if we can then make it really small, so a few inches by a few inches, you can you can slap it top left of the screen or whatever, top right of the screen, then. Have everything clickable real quick. Hey, I'm totally up for it. Like, if if, if it makes sense, I'm I'm totally in. Yeah. So, um, but that'll be a whole chunk of work to do that. So, um, I'm gonna I'll put in the skills where the skills are at the moment, um, and then I'll yeah, it'll be a long term plan to do all the character sheets. Okay, well, uh, I, I'm pretty sure there won't be many changes coming up after this, so I appreciate all the work you put in, and hopefully hopefully, this is the last set of major changes. Cool. All right. Um, I actually think we have a quorum. I don't know if... Uh, let me see if he responded. I'm not sure if um, Trojan is going to be joining us. Did he respond? No, and it looks like he's off, not offline, but he's, he's... He said in general he'll be in a bit. Oh, he did? Yep, in the, in the general chat. 
Oh, I didn't even see that. Yeah, he did say that. Um, also, that Riley boy that joined earlier today, I was telling him about it. He might drop in just to listen like Mina's been. Okay, perfect. Do, do you know, like, is that someone you know, or is that just like a, a, a random, I didn't even yeah. ask him. Is he, yeah, okay. he's from a friend group. Oh, perfect. Okay. All right, well, we'll, we'll see you. We've been playing together, so. <laughs> Say that again. We've been playing Tarkov together, and I asked him if he liked tabletops. He's like, yeah, except I keep finding a bunch of douches to play with, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think it seems to be the most common issue. So, well, let, let's hope we can buck that trend for him. Um, actually, I'm not sure if we can, but we could try. All right. Um, should we get going? Sure. Sure. Yeah, fine. Well, with, I don't know how long uh, Trojan's going to be, but he's back at town, and we're going to start out in the woods again. So let me, um, let me get to the right map. So just as a recap, right, and, and I start off every time with how many days it's been since this all started out. It's still exactly 14 days since you met Maddie, right? So there wasn't a night between, you know, the last session and this session. Um, and again, I'm going to say people's names out loud before I write them into the game because last week, you know, and I'm about to get there again, but Emmy gave half the supplies to Cox to buy them time, right? So, um, she, you know, he kind of turned up at the town. She gave him half the supplies. Um, he let you guys know that you were being watched, right? He said to you at one point, uh, something about this was an adorable little ambush you were setting up, and he kind of gave you the sense you guys were being uh, spied on. So that evening, Luther and Bull went out. Like you, you looked at some maps and figured out how many spots in the region there could be. <clears throat> and there was only a few of them where you thought that they could see you from, right? So you got there, you radioed back to the others and also to the farm and let William know what was going on. And that kind of gave away your position, right? So um, Cox and some of his guys turned up and tried to surprise you, but you guys were able to turn the tables on them. So in kind of a bizarre twist of fate, like you were able to kill three of his men um, and, and he was badly hurt. So this all ended with you kind of like interrogating him in the forest while some people were back at town. So um, let, let, let's just pick it up again from there and kind of like, you know, talk through kind of like the, 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 the cliffhanger from last time and figure out how to start. So Ball and Luther, you've just, you know, bloodbath out in the forest Cox is the only surviving member of his team, very badly injured. What, what, what are you guys doing? Uh, you got the rope. So the first thing I need to ask him, how to smoke. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> he, he does. Like, he kind of laughs at you a little bit, like, uh, but it, it's not exactly good-natured, right? But he's also not being derisive. So he reaches a bloody hand inside of his jacket and he pulls out a, a pack of smokes and he, he he puts one in his mouth and then offers the pack to you and to Ball. And I'm sure as a pro athlete, Ball is just a chain smoker over there. <laughs> mm, no, thanks. Uh, all right, yeah. I'll light up. What are we going to do about this guy? Well, and at some point here, um, well, seeing as he's alive and I want to tie him up and bring him back with us. How do we get him there? Well, I am a pro athlete. I could probably drag him along. I'm trying to remember, how did you guys get out here? You you brought a car, but you left it off in the woods and you wandered up here, if I remember correctly. Does that does that ring a bell? Uh, we may have. We, we took a car out here? I don't know. We I, don't really remember. I don't think we walked, but you went surveying. It's whatever you did. Yeah, uh, I don't think we ever really talked about it. I didn't know how far, was it walking or was it really like driving? Just it, it was driving. I can bring up the map and show you... Um, oh where it was yeah, if, if driving was the uh, logical thing that's probably what we did hey so I'm, I'm streaming this via twitch um that might be the easiest way for me to show you maps if you can look at this okay. uh, twitch stream oh uh, yeah i'm stepping out here Okay, yep, see the top. All right, so 
You were out here, so somewhere, and I keep thinking this is roll 20, that I can like ping it, but I can't, right? So if, if you see my mouse moving over by Flea Hill, this is where okay. you guys found them, right? So it is. it was too far away from the town. I can do... Uh, Directions, Georgetown, Flea Hill. Yeah, it, it would be an hour, about an hour and 15 minutes walking, right? They've got obviously some high power binoculars and they're up on a hill looking down. But to drive, it would have been seven minutes, right? So it, it, it's up to you because this was the second location. Oh, I don't know if you remember. That's definitely a drive then. Yeah. Even if it was just to the road. Yeah, so let, let's say to even just kind of to like back to here, right? So, it, you, you know, this is roughly where you guys were up on a hill somewhere looking down. Your car's parked somewhere down here. You, so you'd be able to kind of get him back down to the hill if you want. That doesn't mean he's, he's going to be coming willingly. So what, what, do you, what are you saying to, to, to Cox himself? Um, well, you can come with us and say. Yeah, sure. Or, or we can just end you here, which way you want to do it. So he, he kind of, again, laughs at you through the blood and says, you still seem to think you're in a position of power. Do you, like, do you not realize that my men are just waiting to attack? Like, you, this was just a couple of us. The rest of them, where do you think they are? They're waiting to attack the town. So he says, like, hey, we, we can do this one of two ways. We can either try and work nicely through this, and I can try and get over the fact you killed a bunch of my guys, or you can see that town go up in flames. What do you want to do? I don't know if you understand the meaning of nice. <laughs> that, that sounds more like an Emmy comment than a bull comment, but I will allow it. <laughs> Been hanging around her too much. Hey, exactly. Well, if he's too weak to do anything, or if I think he's going to be able to actually do something, I kind of want to restrain him. It, it, I don't have any rope. So, Luther, do you have anything? Uh, do I have my handcuffs? <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> You're not, it's not, a, your, it's not on my sheet, mind. though. I don't think so. You could use, so one of a couple of things, right? You could use a distemper dice so that you've now, and forever going forward, you've got your your uh, your handcuffs with you. Alternatively, one, one of these soldiers has probably got um, either a belt you could use or has got some of those, like, you know, some zip ties or something that they'd use for hostages or, or for, you know, for whatever. Yeah, I was going to say, watch him. I'm going to come over to this guy and do him. See if he's got. A, if he doesn't have any zip ties, I'm going to take his belt and see what kind he's got. All right. So is that is that what you're doing? You're you're going over and. Yes. All right. Perfect. So um, all of them had. So so who? Sorry. Ping again. Who are you? Who is it? That you're okay. So that guy. Let me just take a quick look. So that guy had a carbine, uh, so you could get a car. You, I, I'm happy enough to give you the carbine if you wanted that. Yep, I'm probably getting close to encumbrance, so let me check. Yeah, I'm at max, so I'm actually going to drop my pistol and the sawed off, and I'll take the carbine. All right. Don't forget you can carry it back to the town without too much issue. Yeah, encumbrance only really comes in like over a longer period of time, right? So you can actually, I, I could pull up the rules and take a look, but you can keep going for most of the day. I think it's for one hour you lose every resilience point. So you could really sure. load up and go back to town with this. Okay, then I'll just, add the, I don't remember how much ammo I had. Or at least uh, I'll drop the pistol, but I'll keep the uh, salt off. Okay. And just for giggles, I'll say I had like eight rounds. I might do a uh, warning in the game tone so people can go over encumbrance, but it'll just remind them they can do it for a limited period. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, again, that, that's that's less of a hard and fast mechanic and much more about you know the GM figuring out what's going on with the group, right, and what they're trying to do. So I, I would agree a warning would be good when someone goes over, but I don't know if there's an actual game mechanic that you need to fix per se, you know? Yeah, it's just a, uh, if the, uh, I'll just put in an auto trigger for it. All right, beautiful. 
All right, so <clears throat> so you find that guy's carbine. Um, make a scavenging check. Yeah, he didn't have any zip ties on him, so he's got a belt like like any good uh, soldier would. So if you want to get the belt and try and tie up cogs with the belt, you can. But he didn't have any yep. zip ties or anything else useful. All right, uh, for now I'll do. I can also use there. How many rounds did he have? Uh, th th Thirty in the carbine. Okay. He had one full clip. This guy hadn't fired anything, so he had one full clip. You were able to take from him. Yeah. This is the one I tapped in the back of the head. Correct. All right, so what are you doing? I'm going to belt up uh, Cox's hands and then go check the other guy, I guess. So a a as you go to like, like to tie his hands, like he recoils a little bit, right? And, and again, he's very wounded, but he's kind of like, hey, I, I don't know if you guys are listening to me or not, but my guys are going to about to attack that town. Are, are, are you going to let that happen or do you want me to call him off? How are you planning to call him off? So what, the, the guy that Bull was just over on, I mean, they, they all had radios, right? So he says, like, we've got radios. Like, hand me that guy's radio and I can, uh, I, I, I can call him off. Has there been any chatter on the radios since we've been sitting out there? No, but, it, I mean, it's been, you know, 30 to 60 seconds, right? So there's been, like, you know, the gunfire exchange and things are ringing in your ears and you're now kind of, like, looking over the dead bodies. So it hasn't been all that long. So the fact that there's been no communication doesn't seem suspicious or weird. I don't think we can give him a radio because then he could just say, hey, and attack on. or whatever. Yeah. So you're going to take the chance and just let the... He's, he's telling you that there's an attack about to happen if he doesn't call it off. So how brave are you guys feeling? How bold do you feel at this point? I'm, I'm going to walk off a little bit just to get out of earshot of him. And I'm gonna go, uh, big chicken, the little turkey, big chicken, the little turkey, come in. <laughs> so, uh, uh there, there's you know, a guy's voice comes back over and he uses some kind of military code, but he, he, he's, I mean, he, he gives the military code as like a check to you to see if you'll give the response because he's obviously not buying this little chicken, big chicken thing. I was actually trying to call the town. Our, our town. <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought you were using their radio. So you're using the uh, own radio. Yeah, no, that's yeah, no yeah, problem. I'm using my radio. Yeah, our radio. Hey, Trojan, welcome in, by the way. You're, I know if that's deliberate, your mic is muted. But uh, so Trojan's back at the town with Battersby, uh, Alina, which is Mina's character. She's not here, and Emmy. So, Luther, who are you calling? Uh, who, who normally mans the, the radio? At the town, whenever or who, because I was talking to someone before. I imagine whoever that was. Yeah, so that was. I mean, you, you spoke to William at the farm, but you also spoke to Emmy. All right. Anything fishy going on in town? Over. Uh, I think you're gonna have to take the cereal. <laughs> What do you mean, me? Which zero? There's two zeros. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I meant uh, you, Johnny, because uh, you're, you're the you're the puppet master here, so I have no idea what's going in town. So let's let's flip back, you guys. Let's leave it a little bit of a cliffhanger because now that Trojans here, this also right. gives us an opportunity right. to get back. Let me flip Sounds over. Cool. I know I'm kind of breaking the rules here, playing two characters, but... <laughs> oh, no. I, like, frankly, I think that I, I kind of wish you were all playing two characters at this point. Do you know what I mean? Like, that, that, that yeah. it, it would be nice to split the group, but everyone still had to play. So, so it's about 10.30, right, back at the town. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, Luther set out before dark, right? So um, he sat there for a couple of hours, or Luther and Bull uh, sat there for a couple of hours waiting for the ambush. So it's like 10, 1030, right? So, you know, the, the church is, as I mentioned over and over, this church is in the center, and you can all see that map, correct? Let me check the stream. Yep. So yeah. so the church has become like the de facto area, right? But like I've shown you before, uh, the town really is 
oh, I forgot, like I'm actually looking at this as a GM, right? So they, they've kind of like, as you can see on that map, right? This is the area they've kind of roped in, right? So this is what they consider to be the local town within that red line, right? So there's a bunch of houses in here, but the church really is like the the kind of the, the focal point, right? And so to Emmy, <clears throat> excuse me, and we'll see what Trojan and Battersby have been doing, but Emmy, you know, you spent most of the day talking to Steve. You, you you kind of hurt his feelings and there was that outburst and then you had dinner with him earlier and you put the beer bottle on the side of his face, you know, to kind of make up from where you slapped him. So you spent a bunch of time today kind of working with Steve and making it right. But Trojan, Battersby, Emmy, I know Minya's not here. What, what, what were you guys doing for the rest of the day in town? Uh, I know I was trying to find the other Steve for sure. And big, uh, I can't keep him straight. Big, whoever this one is, the charismatic one, said he didn't know where he was either. Yeah, he didn't. So uh, figure out a skill um, and make a check to see if you're able to talk to anyone to track down uh, uh, Bald Steve. Um, I remember the last time I was failing that too, so I'm sure I haven't. Maybe. Fresh scene, I don't remember. Fresh session, I don't remember what happened the last time. So, no, no, no undue negative mod. Okay, um, who should I be charming? Well, I'll just do an influence. Oh, so wants me to pick a character. Do it on Steve. Holy cow. Beautiful. Let me give you a wild dice I'm not, or a distempered dice because I'm not sure this is... Uh... Hey, Matt, are you there? Yep. Do you know if that's set up? Like, it just... It says... It, it, did he get a distempered dice for doing that? It says it next to it. Did he get one for I, that? I get checked. Perfect. No, you got it. So... <clears throat> um, Steve's able to introduce you to a couple of people... The the bald Steve hangs around with, like the other Steve, right? So they're a little bit cagey to start with. But they, they kind of come clean, right? The the Steve left. <clears throat> bald Steve, like, didn't believe in what's going on, right? So him and maybe 15, 20 people, they left just under as night fell, right? As Luther was heading out, right? Like a bunch of these people went in the other direction, and as far as you've been able to ascertain, they were heading north, right? They told people that they were heading up to see if, like, they, they just, this just didn't feel right. And there's been rumors for a while that, um, let me find the right map. There you Exodus. go. Yeah. So, so, uh, Philadelphia, which is just north of Wilmington, just like north of this up here. There's rumors that they've really started getting things together, right? And so that's become one of these beacons of hope. So Steve has led a bunch of people that didn't want to stay and fight and didn't think you guys would be able to get things figured out. Apparently, they've headed up north towards Philadelphia, which is the way people move. It's probably like a five or a six day walk at the bare minimum. So that was as a result of this morning, probably. Correct. Yeah, like all the drama, right? So when you guys were voting, you may or may not remember, but there were 27 parties that like like got to take part of the vote, like like heads of family or whatever, like, you know, people that had other people in the village. So uh, Bald Steve, like the other Steve, had like a, a, a smaller contingent. Him and all of those are gone because, again, like he just – he doesn't believe that they're safe here and he doesn't trust these raiders to not come back again. Now, I'll say it again, they only left a couple of hours ago. So not suggesting you would want to, but you realize you'd be able to catch them if you, you know, and they've gone on foot apparently as well, right? So they've decided to kind of take their chances rather than go with breaking down vehicles. But if you took one of the vehicles from the town, there's a good chance you'd be able to catch them. But again, not suggesting you would want to do that. Well, Steve is the, uh, the mayor, right? No, that's, again, like one of these dumb things, when I write it, it makes total sense. And it's kind of like almost in jokes. But but Tall Steve was bald and Bald Steve was short, right? And again, I had pictures for both of them. But like, it makes sense when I'm writing it. And then I try and either role play it or explain it. And I'm like, that was a dumb fucking idea, right? So, <laughs> so again, like calling this guy Cox. And then saying to you last week, Cox, Cox was flapping around in your arms or whatever we were talking about, right? And so it's just dumb. I got to get better at saying these things out loud because, again, in my head, it makes all the sense in the world. So the other co-leader of the town, let's call him Frankie Giblets at this point, but Frankie took a smaller contingent and has gone to, to New Philly. Make sense? Okay. 
Hey, Frankie, and, and he I thought he was... Cool. I thought he was bald Steve's kid. Oh my god. <laughs> no, no, that's Franklin. Oh my god, you're right. I just Franklin, made it so oh much god. worse. I made it so much worse. Okay, okay, ignore me. What are you guys up to? Hey Trojan, what are you doing this evening, buddy? Um I'm gonna be honest, uh I'm probably sleeping. Okay. Like most people in the town, I, I think that's very fair, right? It's, there's not a lot to do. There's not, you know, after dark, there's no TV. So people do go to sleep a lot. So, all right, Battersby, what, what, what have you been up to? And I should point out, Battersby, you were in this house over here, if you can see where I'm pinging. This is where you were last time because it had a two-story view and you could kind of look over this and get a good sniper's perch. What was agreed when the other guys went looking for the radios? Or whatever they were looking for. Agreed in what uh, way? As far as where were you going, how long were you taking, what were you looking for? Oh, I don't, uh, Luther was going to go see if he could investigate and find maybe where they were hanging out and watching us from. All right. I think Battersby would have followed that, but if, if given he's not, um, I guess he will... I mean, in lieu of that ball, we went this way. Yeah. Um, I guess he'll just stay up and camped. He'll be alarmed about being seen, so I guess he'll be... Um, uh, I don't know, he can't really do much other than stay in that sniper's tower tower really uh, and look over people so the people know he's here right so I, I i i forgot how paranoid you were so i came out last week and when i had dinner when i was playing you so people do know you're here that doesn't mean you have to interact with them it doesn't mean that you've made any friends with them but you're not a secret to the people in the town anymore yeah okay all right so uh, you were even in town two weeks before that so I think maybe yeah, I know them a lot more than they know me. <laughs> <laughs> You're so weird and creepy. Um, <laughs> as Farmer Battersby, that is. I didn't mean that to sound like like as a direct personal <laughs> insult. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, so. Um, sure. All right, so so you're asleep, or you're you're rather keeping a watch over the town. Trojans asleep. Um, Alina's gone. Emmy, what what have you you've spent most of the day with Steve, right? You've figured out that um Billy Bollocks took a contingent of people and is headed north to to uh, New Philly. It's getting late. What 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 are you doing? Are you still with Steve? If you're not, what are you up to? Um, I'm probably yeah, I, I would think so, because at this point with the connection that I made with Steve when the other the gone Steve when we showed up, I felt like we had a connection, so I I kind of have feel a little betrayed, but not to the point of like, oh God, I'm going to slip my wrist or something like that. So I feel like a little half betrayed at the connection we had. So he, he, um, Steve feels really betrayed, right? So he, 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 he started to confide in you a little bit more, right? The, the, you know, you and him are building that whole kind of like, you know, frenemy relationship, right? So he's gone from looking at you as being a challenger to being somebody that he can kind of confide in or an equal, right? So he says, you know, he, he's, he's very disparaging. He's kind of like that little shit. Like, I feel I like carried him for the last couple of months. Like, I feel that, you know, like we tried to do this together. He kept on leaving more and more to me, and now he's gone. He's left us with, like, what, 200 people, 225 people that are now all looking to me to give them answers. So he's really bitter and angry about, uh, about that going on. Um, you know what, maybe I'll give him a little inspiration if I can find him. There he is. Oh, nice. Man, you're having good roles this evening. I don't think you were quite this way last week, if I remember correctly. No, not at all. So he, he, he's feeling inspired, right? And so, and, and where are you, by the way? Are you in the church? Are you at his his house? Like they, you know, they set you up. There's a guest house that you like. You can stay in. Like, where are you when this is going on? Um, I'm not sure because we were doing dinner, and then we're probably trying to figure out where Steve is. So I guess wherever that took us, if it's like maybe a house nearby, maybe if we 
kept talking and went to his place. I'm I'm all ears. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. So point, wherever the conversation took us. Yeah, you're you're still at the, so so in that case, thank you. So in that case, you're still in the um um the church. Yeah, you, you're still there, right? Which is how you found out the 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 other guy had gone, right? Because you're just kind of talking to everyone that comes in, and someone just made mention of like, oh, I saw Steve talking to or it's whatever his name was, Billy Bollocks, talking to Madeline, and someone's like, oh, but I saw Madeline heading north, right? So through this triangulation you figured out like that's what's happened like he's gone and then you say to someone they're like yeah i saw him and a bunch of them leaving so that's how you and steve came to it through these connections in the church okay so we probably are sharing a bottle that he's got hidden in a desk somewhere at the church yeah yeah absolutely he, he kind of breaks that he's, he's taken over the priest's office in the back of the church or the preacher's office and he takes you in there and you two are sitting talking things through and he's like, yeah, this is the only thing in this church I believe in. And behind a, a big picture of the Virgin Mary, he opens it up and there's a little wool safe and inside of the wool safe, there's nothing but booze. And he's like, this is what the preacher did. This was apparently his little confessional. So he breaks open the booze and gives you a glass of whiskey. Well, you meant that at this point. All right. So I guess for the inspiration, I'm just trying to build him back up a little bit that he's a... Uh... He's been taken over more and more responsibility. I mean, people are alive because of him, if that's the case. I mean, sure, we had the setback from the bandits, but uh, you're doing the best you can. So he, he's, um, you, you can see it. He kind of like has a moment of like genuine kind of like, wow, thank you. Like he doesn't really know how to kind of respond to that, right? He's, he's uh, very grateful and he offers his glass up and toast you on it. And he says that, you know, like you and the team or like you and, you know, not so much Battersby because he's still hiding from people. But you and Luther and uh, Ball, well, Ball's an original resident, but you and Luther have been a boon. Like, he's really glad that, that you guys have been here to help with this. He's not sure how he'd have gotten through the last couple of days without uh, you, and, particularly you and Luther, um, taking some, you know, some actions that you did. Oh, yeah. I mean, assuming we can get through this, I'm sure we could still make something work, but we, we definitely have a lot of work to do to get this place back in order. So even as winding down there, what 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 are you what, what are you and Steve gonna do? Like he's kind of getting tired. He's had like a couple of drinks. By the way, he's he's not making a move on you, right? So he's he's pretty much old enough to be Emmy's father. So it's not like he's kind of getting weird with you and trying to get you drunk. So, but you know, th this nightcap's working, and Steve's getting a little bit. Um, it looks like he's getting a little bit dozy, and he says that he, you know he's gonna turn in. Mix another drink to take home with me. Yeah, so he'll do the same, and he'll wait to walk you back just to make sure the you know he he he, he kind of gives you a very fatherly look, and he's like, you know, the streets are dangerous, so I'll wait for you, and then he'll walk you back to the house. <laughs> okay. All right. So, what do you what are you guys? And we're going to split backwards and forwards back to the uh, campsite, Luther. What what are you doing? Oh, not the campsite. The uh, the kind of the the, the spy post. Big chicken, the little turkey. Come in, little turkey. Over. So that would be to Emmy, right? So you guys have walkie-talkies that you took from the farmhouse originally, right? That's where you got these walkie-talkies. So if you're doing that, Luther, unless you tell me otherwise, that will be Emmy's uh, walkie or, or, or Battersby or, or, or Trojan. It'll be one of those guys will have that walkie-talkie. So who are you trying to get to? I imagine, isn't there like like a town frequency we all kind of use? Yeah, I, I feel like we all want to hurt it. There's a more frequency for you guys, right? Uh, like, because, you know, you're still your own kind of like little group. But Steve and his team, they do use a different frequency. So you can flip backwards and, and forward between those on the radio. So up to you, Luther. If you want to talk to just yeah, your whoever, guys, go on. Yeah, whoever like, uh, most would be in charge of the town or the outpost or, like, just the town in general. It'll be Steve. That has be spent a um, distemper dice on having a radio, so he definitely has one up in his pro town. So, so, so you're sitting there listening, right? And there's a couple of guys, I don't know if you remember, but there was a police officer called Toby, and there was, let me look up his name, there was a, a, a former military guy as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they've got radios, right? Because they're as close to being combat, you know, they're as closest thing that we have to be in combat ready. Steve would have some... You know, Franklin would probably have one. So there's probably a half dozen people that you know in the town that, that would have a radio. So you can talk to them, again, whoever you want to talk to in the town, Luther. 
But Steve would be the one that would answer you. Sorry, if I'm not being clear. Steve feels that he's still the, especially after the pep talk from Emmy, Steve feels like he's the leader. So he would be the one that would answer. Anything funny going on down there? Over. Steve looks at you, Emmy, and like kind of laughs that you two are drinking, but he says, like, anything funny other than finding the priest's hidden stash? I don't know what that means, over, but uh, <laughs> no, that, eyes peeled that, that was to Emmy. Like, Emmy, is there anything oh. weird going on in the town except that you two are getting drunk on his stash? I'm probably just going to giggle. So Steve will tell you that um, that little shit Billy Bollocks has walked off with a bunch of people to go to New Philly. So he he, he kind of he tells you not exactly funny, but he just found out a couple of hours ago that happened. And again, Steve's a little bit drunk, so he has that kind of like he doesn't have a filter on at the moment. But I do know other people are listening, right? Yeah, you knew. Yeah. You can make an educated guess on that because Cox told you that his guys had been listening in. That's how, actually how they'd found you by you using the radio earlier. Well, maybe uh, send some people out, uh, do a little patrolling over. So I um, I'm going to look at Steve and say, okay, I'm going to sober up a little bit and say, yeah, that's probably a good idea. He kind of laughs and he's like, what, what, what do you mean patrols? Like, I mean, like you've seen the people we've got here. If you want to come with me, we can go and wake some people up. But like nobody's set up there for patrols, right? And you guys haven't done anything to kind of institute that kind of military thinking here. So that like, again, Steve laughs at you a little bit. He's like, what do you mean patrols? You want to go for a joyride together? I'll keep you company. Um, if we hadn't cut, I, I feel like at this point, we probably hadn't cut him into Luther. So I'm probably going to catch him up to speed real quick. Doing as Emmy, uh, correct? Looking for his height. So, all right, so Steve kind of gives you Steve looks a little bit not shocked exactly, but Steve has a moment of like, wow, okay. So, like, he he's kind of caught up to speed, but is a little bit again, not freaked out, just taken aback. Yeah, we should probably go get a couple guys that want to walk the rooftops or I don't know, maybe take a lap around in a car. So, so Steve's starting to sober up as well a little bit, right? So previously, if you remember, when you guys came into town, as you, as you got to the red line, let me go back to, as you got to the red line down here, <clears throat> there was someone on the top of a roof with a sniper's rifle, right? It's the old former Marine, Bob, I think his name was, that, that was uh, here. And then previously... Excuse me, previously you'd seen over here that there was also, they'd had snipers, right? So Steve sobers up a little bit along with you and he's like, yeah, yeah, I can get those guys to get out on the top of the building, right? There's no patrols, but, you know, if they're not already up there, he can get them to go and keep watch. Are right, um anything else we should know about? Keep us posted. Uh, no, but anything at all, just let me know, please. Over. All right, so I'm going to take the radio. Oh, I was going to say, take the radio from Steve and switch over to the mall frequency and tell uh, see if Williams awake and tell him to uh, keep an eye out, an extra eye. There, there's no response from William, um, but that I mean, it's it's again, it's like ten ten thirty, right? That that it, it might yeah. just be that he's asleep. That's fair. That, that as B would be on that uh, frequency though, wouldn't he? Because he knows that. We we figured out a while ago that we didn't trust the radios, didn't we? Um, I don't know. I think it was just loser and ball finding it, that out. It came in before I missed one, so. Um, oh wait, you're right. No, no, no. You're right. He came in and said, "Oh, that was real cute that you were doing." Yeah, yeah. And the well, one of the original Steve said that he thought that they were listening in. Yeah, Franklin said it when he came and got you from the house, right? Like it, it, like two sessions ago, three sessions ago, right? When he brought you down from the farmhouse, he wouldn't let you lose the, use the radio because he was worried the people were listening in. Yeah. Say that again, Matt. So I was going to say Pat is going to be on the mall chatter um, listening in. Yep. No, genuinely nothing, right? Now, now again... 
there might be nothing to read into that, right? Like, there's, there's been no chatter on that mall yeah. radio for a while, and you can't raise William when you say his name. You spoke to him a couple of hours ago, but again, 10, 10.30, you know, he's a septuagenarian. It's probably not unexpected that he'd be in bed by now. Still weird that you can't raise him, though. Hey. Uh, I, so are you calling for him and he's not responding? Yeah, that's what I'm doing because I'm kind of tipsy and forgot about that. And I'm still every – I'm going to try once and then maybe in a couple minutes try again and then maybe in a couple more minutes try again. So on the on the second one, where where are you expecting William to be, sir? Well, they're all at the farmhouse. Oh, yeah. Because okay. we, we transplanted from the mall after losing people from Biker, I believe, that came in, shot around on. Yep. So I talked to everybody. Abandoning your well-made watchtower and going to the house. Yeah. Uh, is, is, uh, are we expecting Williams to be uh, Williams to be missing? I, as far as we know, it's just been we've been down here in town and left them up to their own places. Did we tell them to keep someone on radio all the time? I don't believe so, but I assume since our entire group's down here that. Maybe that might be insinuated, but I'm not going to on it. We should probably classify this as a uh, a channel that can be overheard then. Oh, no, I know that. I'm just saying, since I forgot IRL, I'm going to play up that I've had a couple of drinks and forgot. Uh, in which case, Baddest B will get out of the tower and go down to Emmy because he doesn't want to be chatting on the radio. <clears throat> so you find uh, Baddest B, you, you kind of run into, as you're heading down towards the church, <clears throat> Emmy and Steve are heading out to go over towards, uh, just to check that there's a watch over here, right? So they're going to check that someone's on top there with a sniper rifle like they should be. And then the plan is to walk over to the other side and make sure the uh, the, the other tower has someone as well. But again, these guys aren't very uh, tactically inclined. So they really only have two points of the town where they've even got guards at the best of times. But again, Battersby, you, you intercept them <clears throat> pretty much as they're leaving the church. You kind of, you, you run into them. Uh, so what are you doing, guys? Now we're trying to make sure that we got posts up and um, considering having someone do a loop around the, the town. Just got to find uh, somebody to wake up to do it. Uh, can we get two going in opposite directions? Two of us? Uh, well, rather than someone do a loop, let's just get oh, people in yes. at both ends. Who's going to be the best, Steve? You got someone who would be the best to go do that? Uh, I'll go Dunbartons. I suggest we go in twos then. That's probably good. Yeah. Somebody go and wake up Trojan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, maybe, Emmy, you go with Trojan. I'll take Steve here. Okay. Steve, you up for a walk? Where's Trojan's house again? <laughs> All right, so yeah, let me bring circles. <laughs> let me bring on to this map. So, <clears throat> and again, let me just move some characters out to give some space. So, Battersby, this is the house you're in. For the sake of argument, uh, Emmy, this is where you guys are going to be able to camp down this evening or bed down this evening, right? So, just just down the road a little bit. Dumbarton Apartments is one of the areas where they've been stationing a sniper, which is where Steve was going to take you to check things out. And then over here, there's another apartment building, right? So they were going to, that's where the other sniper is, right? So walk me through again, like who's going in which direction? Um, we were going to get Battersby and Steve um, to Dunbarton and Emmy and Trojan to wherever this one is. Hey, so let me stop and address something because Emmy just asked a really good question in the um, in the chat. 
I don't actually know, right? So, you know, I, I we walked through, or we looked at the distance earlier, right? So it's uh, 3.8 miles. Would gunfire carry four miles on a completely still night? Because there's there's no other sounds, right? I mean, there's 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 nothing anymore, right? So there's no ambience, like so I don't know, like to, to the Texan, Grumster, like would, would would gunfire carry for four miles? No, big question. How do you in your country, folks? Would do you think gunshots fire for four, carry for four miles? No. One uh, depends what type of gun it is, like artillery <laughs> shell. Like, I, I reckon a month. Uh, I reckon a month. <laughs> a mile. Um, you said this is a pretty flat land, though, right? Correct. Then I would say no. Like my wife just reiterated that we kind of lived in a valley area, so it would probably echo and probably travel for quite a while before. It seems a little sick. Okay. So, I, you know, I thought so. I didn't really think it was close enough to hear. But then when I started, because seven minute, a seven-minute drive feels like a good distance to me, you know? Yeah. All right. So, no, you, you haven't heard anything. So, so again, so Battersby, you're walking over there with Steve. Is that right? Uh, yeah, sorry. I was just looking up. A shotgun can be heard from up to two miles away. Yeah, so no. So that that was double that. So even though there was um, other, you know, there was like automatic fire and whatever else, I kind of think that's reaching the limit of what we could expect. Some of that's good to put in the rule book now, I think. I would, to, to, I, I, I'll put anything in there. Well, like, what are you thinking in particular? You should uh, like the whole section just on perception thing. Yeah, well, for me, there's a big thing about um, because there's no electricity and all of that, just like there's no TVs and all of that sort of thing, everywhere is always sort of quiet. So it's incredibly hard to actually move quietly everywhere because there's nothing kind of hiding. Your, yeah, there's no ambient sound, right? Most of the time. Um, but it, uh, it does mean that anything, any noises that are made um, aren't amplified, but they are technically in comparison to what we're used to because it, I live in the countryside. I know what every sound is around my house because they're all just natural sounds and anything outside of that boundary is instantly you're perceptive to it. Um, that makes me a weirdo, yeah, I'm fully aware of the fact whatever that was. <laughs> no, he said, in real life, Battersby, he's spot on, like, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so me and my wife look like, I know exactly what you're talking about. But yeah, when you're in a city, there's just crap going on all the time. You you just ignore it all. It's the opposite when you're just in the country and stuff, because, you know, you're just so used to everything going on around you. Uh, but no, what I was meaning about just writing in the thing was maybe a radar of, um, how far you can hear big sounds and put some examples of sounds like a cowbell or a gunshot yep. or, a, you know, they're different to traveling how you would know. Um, you know, a city will swallow up every sound, um, whereas what you have now is just always the dead of night sound. Agreed. Even during the day, it's weird. Sorry, sideways uh, I know hey, worries, no worries. So, <clears throat> so Emmy, where where are you? And it, what, did you just go and like wait Trojan up? What are you doing? Yes, that's what I'm doing. Trojan, how heavily do you sleep? Ah, <laughs> uh, how long has it been? It's like two hours, maybe, or an hour and a half since you went to bed. It's a, it's slept pretty lately, I guess. So, so, so I'm half panicked, so I'm probably not being nice about knocking up. I'm not pounding on it. Your val is your voice shrill? Is that what you're saying, Emmy? Your voice is shrill at this point. Um, I'm not being quiet, but I'm not screaming. Ugh. If the next door neighbor might start hearing me, if he's the light sleeper. Uh, so, so, yeah, so I'd go and open the door and say something along the lines of, the hell are you doing? Uh, we might have an issue and we're going to need to do a little patrol. 
What is you? Um, Luther's, um, what did Luther say? He, Luther suggested that we should keep eyes out and maybe have a patrol go around, you know, after this morning. Um, there might be something tonight. I, I'm, I'm not fully aware, but uh, if Luther out there at the ambush point is telling us that we should go look around, we'd, we should probably go look around. All right, then. And better be suggested that we should do this in pairs. Okay. All right. Hey Trojan, what what weapons do you have? Remind me. Shotgun and a heavy pistol. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. All right, pres presumably, like like when you and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but presumably when you get up and go, like you you know you kind of strap it like strapping up for war, right? Taking all your stuff with you. Yeah. All right. Perfect. All right. So. Um, <clears throat> Better speak. Let, let's have you make because I know we all love this. Let's have you make a perception check with a with a minus one C mod because it's dark. Ooh. So Steve's talking a lot to you, right? So he just kind of seems to be like jabbering, a, jabbering away in your ear over there, right? So. As you get closer to the um, to the Dunbarton Apartments, as you're kind of walking up the road, <clears throat> you, you're almost well, not almost. This batters me. You're getting like frustrated. Like this guy's kind of like really getting in your ear and winding you up. So let me just move you over a little bit. Hey, Steve. 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 So, uh, he's not even mm -hmm. hearing you. Okay. He's just talking the whole time. Even when you're saying that, he's just he's talking about how glad you are you guys came to the town and how disappointed he is in Billy Bollis that's headed north up to New Philly. He just uh, I'll, I'll be like an inch away from his face, like the whiskers of my beard in his face. Steve. Steve. What? Until what? He, until he goes, Shut the fuck up. No more noise. So he, he looks very apologetic, but he also looks very scared. And he's like, he, he says to you, why, do you hear something? You there, Battersby? Which part of shut the fuck up do you not understand? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... So um, Steve is looking very kind of like uh, uh, chastised, right? So um, you guys are around here at the moment. As you get closer, as you kind of look up, make another perception check to see if you can see anyone on top of the building. Uh, less mods, uh, any minus mods? This yeah, time? like yeah, Steve, uh, yeah, like, um, like a minus one, just because it's so so late and dark. Yeah. So Sorry, I got my night goggles on there. You, you you can see you can't see anyone on top of the roof, right? And it's it strikes you as odd. Now there's a possibility that they're over on the other side of the roof, right? But as you've been kind of you know walking up towards this building. You know, you're getting close, and you're pretty sure you haven't seen anyone move the whole time that they've been up there. The whole time that you've been coming towards them, brother. You haven't seen anyone up there or any indication there's actually anyone on the roof. Hey, Steve. Yeah? You got a problem. You got a problem. So Steve looks at you, and he's kind of, you know, he has a, a cold fear look in his face, and he's like, what, what, what do you mean that we have a problem, right? And he's got, a, he, he's got a pistol in his hand, so he kind of like almost reflexively grips it and kind of holds the barrel like he's, he's nervous. So he's like, what, what do you mean a problem? <laughs> Safety's on. Don't worry. He's not going to shoot you accidentally in the foot or the butt. You're, you're safe for the moment. Uh, Steve, I want you to quietly... Go over to. Um, have we got anyone else in the in the town that I trust? Um, I only, only trust our normal guys. Um, so I'm assuming we're out of play, uh, out of characters because Luther and well, I don't like Luther anyway. Uh, Good to know. Paul is, Paul is gone. 
Emmy's gone and John is gone. Yeah. Know. Did you make eyes at anybody at breakfast? <laughs> Be lucky if I saw anyone at breakfast. <laughs> make eyes um, jesus christ this guy can't even make eye contact with himself when he's shaving let alone with the rest yeah, of you yeah, yeah, that's why i don't shave that's why i got beard um i might send him to go and get reinforcements um or i could send him as a decoy up onto the top of the head so uh, the, the, there are reinforcements, right? So if you kind of broach that subject, and I'm not sure how serious you were, so there's the former state patru uh, state trooper that'll help, right, Tobias? Oh, I like Jim. I like the sheriff. You did? The sheriff. Yeah. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah. So there was him. His name's Toby. So, he, you know, Steve can go and get him. Um, and there's also uh, uh, another guy called Bob that was a marine, a field medic, 35 years ago. So, but he, he, he could also he's the, the, the closest other thing to someone with military training. Yeah, I'm not sure I met him. The sheriff, I like that. So, um, I, I, I'm assuming we went there quietly because Battersby doesn't do anything. Um, uh, even if he was noisy, being a noisy bitch all the way, then we'd have gone, you know, secure this route to. Um, the roof. Can we? Can I move up in a building? Uh, I'm just going to say I'm going to go up there, and I'll point to a high spot um, that we can. I can see the rooftop from. I want you to go and get Toby um, and meet me back here, and stay off the radio. So, so just to put it into context for you, if you can look at, let me make sure I'm on the right map. Yep. So on this screen, right? So the, these are, they're not great apartment buildings, right? This is a car park in the center that where I'm pinging at the moment. So there's four yeah. buildings on the outside, right? So this is the apartment complex as is, right? So I know over on this side as well, by the way. So this building over here and this building over here, this is traditionally where there's been a, a watch, right? On one of the two of those. So as you kind of approach, this is where you could, you couldn't see anyone on either of these, right? So, so put Battersby where you're going. Steve's heading off to go and get Tobias, and he'll come back, and he will stay off the radio. But walk me through what you're doing. Uh, I'll go up onto the roof of one of these, and instead of being looking up, I'll be at least looking parallel. I assume they're all the same sort of height. So, um, so Steve told you before he went, the, the, this building over here, this is the one where people usually are because you get the best view, right? So this is where some people, like when they're doing watch out, sometimes they go over there just to break things up. But this one is the building where people mostly are. Okay. Uh, which one's the one with mostly are? Uh, sorry? No worries. This one here? The one most, yeah. most north? Yeah. And that has the best vantage point. Correct. Correct. Okay. So, so now, that's the one I want to try and be at the same height of, if possible. So, so it's it's again, it's an apartment building, right? And they've opened everything up. So there's a fire escape on the bottom floor, like here. There's or even like an an, an entry to the apartment building. So you'd be able to go in and walk up, like you know, whatever four flights of stairs, and then come out on the roof, right? So if yeah, no. Nah. I, no, no, no. I'm going up to one of the other buildings uh, that's of a similar height so that I can get to the same height to look across to that one. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, so this one... This yeah, oh, oh, so that... I'm sorry, mate. So I didn't see the ping when you did it earlier. So this building I'm yeah. pinging now, that's where you're climbing up, right? Yeah, because uh, I figure these ones are a bit close. Yeah, if someone's looking out... Fair comment. Uh, I can approach from this side and not have to clear out away anything and yeah, hi. All right, beautiful. What are you? Um, I, I, presumably, you're going up there as quietly as possible, or are you 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 singing songs? No, I'm, yeah, my my radio's off, and I'm not doing the cha cha. All right, so let's have you make a stealth check. No, no C modifiers. <laughs> okay, well, I've got to take my boots off. Yeah, and as you're going in, like as you're going up one of the stairs, one of the flights of stairs, like you're just, you, you just, you're thinking about, you know, the farm that was taken away from you, and you lose concentration, and you're like this big metal door slam, right? So there's kind of like the apartment building reverberates with this noise, right? So make make a perception check. 
Uh, sorry, as soon as that happens, I'll stealth it as much as I can over to the other end of the apartment block because there's always two ways in and out. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, perception check. So you, you hold your breath, right? And, you, and, it, and it feels like the only sound you hear is the beating of your heart. And it feels like you hold your breath for like three minutes. But you're, you're pretty certain there's no noises in this building, right? So even though you just slam that up, and we can make another stealth check. In fact, make another stealth check. Yeah, so you you were, you, were, you were successful, and as you're sidling across, you don't hear anything, right? So you're able to get to the roof, and you're able to, uh, with that, that success, you're even able to open the door onto the roof and kind of go out without making too much noise. Cool. So why... And I'll use, why, I'll use my scope to scope out the other rooftop. Hold that thought. So um, let, we're switching back to um, Luther, <clears throat> Luther and Bull, you're up there with Cox. Um, you've since spoken to um, – you have him tied up with a belt, as last I remember. You've spoken to Steve and to Emmy. What, what is your next move from the vantage point, the, the kind of the watch point you've been at? So he says people are going to attack, right? So I figure if uh, he's lying or bluffing about that, then nothing's going to happen. But if he's not – and hopefully we'll hear really quick, and then we could uh, deal with the whole him calling them off situation. Well, I got him tied up. Are we dragging him back to the car? Do we do we want to do that now, or do we want to wait to see if this uh, attack thing plays out or not? Well, if this attack thing's going to happen, I'd rather be closer than further away. At a point. I, I actually really like what Luther's doing. He's just waiting to see what happens to everybody else before he makes his next move. It's very clever. Yeah, and keeping him tied up, you know, if it shit starts going down, then yeah, we've got him and we radio. At a point. All right, perfect. So you've headed down, if I'm right, you've headed down to the car. Is that correct? Is he uh, walking along willingly or did we have to drag him? Uh, you know, it, it, it's it's more that he's injured, right? So he, he's not putting up a fight, but he's also requiring, you know, you, you've bound his hands and you shot him a couple of times, right? So he, he's needing some help to get through the woods and back to the car. So you're moving at kind of half speed, but he's, I mean, you can tell, right? He's genuinely wounded and injured. He's not doing this just to be a dick. That's just a side benefit. Okay. Yeah, I'm helping him along and I'm, Obviously, keeping an extra attention to him to see if he's going to slip something. All right. Then I'll walk behind them to make sure nothing happens. So you, you, you get back to the car. Um, it, it, everything seems to be fine. There's no sign of any more of this guy's men. He, he, you know, he, he's almost... He's, he's kind of like like going in and out of consciousness, right? So he, he's been shot a couple mm -hmm. of times, so he's going into involuntary shock. And he's becoming less and less kind of co coherent or present in the moment because he's, again, he's, he's going into shock from having been shot a couple of times. Um, let me check my character real quick. Um, I do not have a first aid kit because I was going to, while he's unconscious, I was going to pat him down for any, any knives or anything like that just in case and you then give him a little bit of a spot of healing. You, you, you'd be able to do that anyway, right? So meaning that, like, I mean, he's just, he doesn't have enough strength to kind of, like, put up a fight at this point, right? So you'd be able to pat him down and see what he has on him. Well, because I'm thinking about putting him in the back. Because if we, do we bring a police car? Because I was going <laughs> to I think you um, did. Either didn't... way, I was going to offer, if I had a first aid kit, just give him a little bit of help. I'm sure he'd be very appreciative. So I, I, I feel like you did take one of the state trooper cars last time. Am I, am I right in there or am I just misremembering? I don't know. Well, I, I, if we did, I was just going to put them in the back so we couldn't get out. Yeah, I think the, for the sake of the, 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 for the narrative, I think that makes a better story, right? So I think that, yeah, you took one of the state trooper's cars. You put him into the back and you're able to, to search him and take whatever you want off him, right? So... He has a heavy pistol. Um, he also has a walkie-talkie, <clears throat> and he has a, um, a, a 
some kind of like crazy special uh, forces hunting knife, right? Like super sharp thing. So he's got that. You can take that off and you can decide if you want any of that later, but you're able to, you know, secure him in the part of the car that he can't unlock from the inside and can't get out from. Yeah, that's right. That's what I was going to do. Okay, so I'll take the knife off of him um, and I'll put it in the front seat because I don't want to carry it. And um, I'm going to let him keep the heavy pistol, but I'm going to empty all the ammo out of it while he's unconscious so he doesn't see that I've taken the ammo out. Yeah, uh, perfect. I was going to say, like, you, yeah, because he, he's dozing in and out, so he wouldn't have seen that, right? So, but that, that sounds like mm -hmm. that was your point. All right, perfect. So, um, all right, so cut back to the town. So I'm, I'm presuming you guys are driving back to town, right? Um, I'm going to leave that up to Luther because if we, I don't know, we want to take if we do, I want to go route. Yeah, yeah, let's take an alternate route. route. Maybe the long way around the other, yeah. the other um, chosen. Yeah, so, exactly. so you might be a little bit out of luck there, right? Because this really is kind of country road, right? So I'm not sure if you can still see my screen, oh, yeah. but... There aren't that many alternate routes, right? So, you know, you could arguably go out of your way and go back down here and kind of come across this, you know, this road instead of that road. You know, you could go further out of your way and kind of go down here again. I'm not sure if you can see mine and kind of come up, but it's not going to be easy. It's not like you're kind of coming in from this area. It's more populous. There's very narrow country or very few country roads along here. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Well, where were the other sites that he found? So one well, of them, it probably doesn't matter. One of them's over here for for what it's worth, and then I remember the other one being northeast because we talked about it being close to where well, the farm was. Okay. How about this? <clears throat> I have infrared goggles. How about we drive without the headlights on? Oh, there you go. Oh yeah, you could totally do that. So make make a make a, make a driving check. All right. Let's see. Won't people be hearing you anyway? Before they see you, regardless. Hopefully, yeah. well, it's drive slow enough, maybe. I said, so make a driving check, um, and it's, it's completely neutral because it's late at night, and you've got the vision goggles, but you've got no lights, and there's you know no lights on the car. So let's just have a neutral uh, check. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. So you 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 um. The car's still drivable, right? But at some point, like, it is so dark and there's no lights on the road that you actually clip a tree, right? So the car is still drivable. No major damage done to it. But, like, the uh, the passenger side uh, rear wing it is pretty damaged on the car. Luther, what are you doing? I thought you did this for a living. I thought I did, too. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> I was only going We're 20. Those damn things off. Oh, no. How about you give them to me? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Can we try again? <laughs> <laughs> well, is it how? So, if that's the case, then it's probably not a whole lot of moonlight then. You know, there's moonlight, but it's not, it's, uh, and again, we're in, I think we're in February, right? So, I don't remember if the date's up here. Oh. So, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty dark winter, you know? Oh, so Luther, you didn't have the settings right. <laughs> yeah, let me let me bang it around a little bit, and then I'll I'll try again. Can I make another drive roll? Yeah, have at it. If you're continuing to go along in the middle of the night, then yeah, have at it. I'm going to use some voodoo to get them goggles, and that don't mean you're not out okay, hey, there. Look at that. Out there oh, that ones that oh, <laughs> Hey, I love it. That's... <laughs> That's from one extreme to the other. I love it. Two December dice along the way. That's awesome. So, yeah, you're able to, uh, with that wild success, you're able to uh, coast towards the town. And as you said, like, you're able to keep it at about 15 miles an hour and the car's well enough tuned that it's not making a huge amount of noise. But between that and the goggles, you pull up, you know, close to the town. Let's say you can get to, to around here. It took here. a minute for it to come back to me, but it came back to me. Yeah. So anywhere from where I just pinged, like anywhere from around here to around here, you'd be able to turn up at the town. Like anywhere along there, you'd be, you know, before anyone saw you. Make sense? I don't, I don't think we saw that. Oh, okay. So uh, uh, actually, let me just do it on this larger map over here. 
I keep thinking I can ping yeah. on Google and I can't, right? So <laughs> let's say you could get to about here, if you can see where I'm pinging, like pretty much onto the border of the town, right? Before anyone would be able to see you, good or bad. No, we're zoomed into the church. I think I oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, yeah, I'm, you're I'm, on screen. yeah I'm an idiot. Sorry. Keith, wait. I feel like this should just move with me, right, wherever I'm going. So you're able to get to about here. You can see where I'm pinging. Am I on the right level? Yeah. All right, beautiful. So you can get to there without anyone seeing you. So let's cut back to uh, Emmy and Trojan. Can you position yourself? I know you were heading down over here to the the other kind of like the other... uh, It was a warehouse down there. It was another kind of elevated point where they've had snipers. So if you can put your tokens to where you are. Going to look for Bob. He said we're just taking the direct route. Yeah. And are you, uh, how are you approaching this? Are you, are you kind of, you know, being uh, cautious or like, or how cautious are you being? Are you just walking along at a normal speed or are you kind of like sidestepping and taking like the slow road? What are you up to? Um, I, unless if Trojan's keeping up, I'm probably bouncing back and forth between walking and speed walking out of nervousness. Trojan, you keeping up? What are you up to? Trojan? I would be walking at a normal pace, but when... Let's have you both make... Yeah, walk. Sorry, mate, I didn't mean to talk over you. Let's have you both make perception checks with minus one because it's late at night. Oops, almost a minus twelve. Ah. So, um, Trojan, you're you're pretty sure you pretty sure you see movement from over here, right? Out of the corner of your eyes, you feel like you've just seen something moving, like but but it feels like you've seen a shadow moving, right? So nothing you can really kind of like pin onto, but it feels a little bit like you know that kind of creepy feeling you get when when you realize something's not quite right. Make sense? All right. Well, unless you say something, you keep walking. Are you letting Emmy know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what up? Look, something look, isn't right. It's, uh, something it's, isn't right. Turn to him. What? Something isn't right. Not right? I put my hand on my gun. Did you see something? Yeah. Where? There's something in the damn shadows. Emmy's anxiety is rising. All right, so we're cutting back from you two to Farmer Battersby. Battersby, you you, you came out onto the roof uh, when we last saw you. What what are you, what are you doing now? Uh, using the scope to check out the other rooftops. All right, let's have you make a perception check with a plus one because of the scope, and let's have you make uh, let's have you make three perception checks. so let's stop there um so you're able to see let me go back to the closer image all right so you were on this rooftop over here i was gonna have you make kind of like three uh kind of uh, checks just kind of looking in different directions to get a sense of things but you you see on the rooftop where you've been told that's where the, there's the most commonly the guard, you see something moving around up there, but a little bit like Trojan just now, you're not entirely sure what it is, right? Like it's super dark where you are and you almost get the sense that you, you know, as you scoped across to there, 
you saw something moving on top of the building, but you kind of got the sense, like the feeling that maybe you saw the end of the movement rather than the beginning of the movement. Is on my side of the building or the other side of the building? It's on, uh, like this corner. If you can see where I'm pinging, right? So you're on the top of the building. You just came out pretty much in the middle of the building that you were on, but it's over in the kind of like the furthest corner away from you in the building there. Does that help? Outside. Yeah. Do you say outside? Sorry. Uh, so it's on the it's on the opposite side. So it's on this side, the side that's not facing me. Correct. Yeah. Which is where I expect our guy to be, though. Yeah. Correct. And you know, for all you know, like, because even though you've got a wild success, like, you know, the the. The reality is you're not able to really tell what this shape was doing, right? They could have been just going in the, like the exit that you just came out of on the roof. Maybe they're going downstairs to get a, you know, a cup of coffee or something, right? So you're not really sure what you saw, but there's no movement now. So, but you did see something. You're not losing your mind. Is this the guy that I expect to have a radio on, William? Yeah. So I will... Um, keep a focus on that area and say, uh, William, check in, please. Is that back to the farm, William? Uh, whatever frequency we're expecting him to pick up on to. I, I mean, like you're talking back to William back at the farm, right? Sorry, that's that's what I meant, correct? Uh, sorry, no, I think he's trying to talk to the guy across the building. No, I'm trying to talk to whoever this is. Oh, 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 oh okay. Yeah, so so there's static, right? So you, you – and sorry, thank you for the clarity there. Yeah, you're on the right frequency, right? And you know you're on the right frequency, but you're asking this guy, you know, like like rooftop lookout, come in, and there's just nothing. There's just static, right? There's no one responding to you. So um, we have um, reports of – uh, we, we've got three guys going into um, uh, Dunbar Apartments. Uh, they're just coming in the front door to relieve you, will you? Check in, please. So still nothing. And again, the static feels kind of suspicious. I'm assuming this is the front doors on this side? Correct. Yep, correct. Remember? So he's not coming to look at who's coming in the front doors? Nope. You don't see anyone on the roof, and you don't see any movement of the front doors. And you can see it all very clearly, right? So with your scope and kind of like, you know, with the ambient light, you have enough that you'd be able to see, you, you know that you'd be able to see if someone was moving around or coming out of the front door. So what did I see before? Just movement. Yeah. Yeah, just movement, but you're not sure what you saw, right? It's it's just, you know, as you were kind of putting your scope to the eyes and kind of looking around, you saw something moving, but again, you weren't looking directly at it, and it was kind of on the periphery. Um... I'll stay on that um, thing. Are there any uh, are there any names I know from these schmoes from um, lunch that we had with? Well, what do you, what, what do you mean the the schmoes? Like, what, which names are you looking for? The ten, the tens people. Oh yeah, you met a bunch of them, right? And you heard Emmy yapping all day long about the different people that she'd been talking to. So you you've got a good sense of like you know you could probably rattle off a half dozen names that are legit. So I'll name two names um, and just say, can you go up to the top of the tab to take over from um, whatever this guy's name is? Because um, uh, it sounds like his radio's dead. Just give him a wave so that you uh, don't surprise him. All right, so still, still no response, right? Still nothing on the radio. So let's cut back to... Um, 
Emmy and um, let me get to the right map. So Emmy and Trojan, <clears throat> you're just down to the warehouse now, right? So let's make a perception check. Do you see anybody standing on the top of the warehouse roof? Damn. Yeah, you're too short, sure, Emmy. Yep. <clears throat> so Trojans, same thing that Battersby had, right? You can see clearly enough to, to feel like you don't see anybody out there at all, right? So <clears throat> you might be mistaken, right? Maybe the guy's sitting down on the ledge of the building, like furthest from you, and you can't see him. But right now you feel you should be able to see if somebody was up there. You should be able to see them, and you can't. I think I'm just seeing stuff in the corner of my eye, but I can't be sure. <clears throat> I kind of feel like you might be too. Um, all right, so... what, Lutheran Bull, what are you up to? Like, you're pulling up... This is all kind of, like, taking place kind of concurrently, right? So where are you... You know, where are you... Right now is where Ball is at the moment, but can you guys move yourselves to roughly where you think you'd be? <clears throat> oh, you're driving, so up to you. Okay, we're over down here in this corner, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And, uh, and we didn't see anything along the drive, like nothing suspicious? Nothing suspicious at all. I, I think we should uh, head to the church. Beautiful. Do you want to ping the route that you're, you'd, you'd take? Can I, let me find the little draw tool here. Perfect. Sorry. I, no, I like it. It's, it's making sure that no, <laughs> you went all out, brother. I love that. Yeah, that, that, I, I like that. Shaking a tail. I like taking the long way around. All right, beautiful. All right, so um, as you guys are taking that route, the, these next things happen simultaneously. So Steve, who's been running as fast as he can, reaches where Tobias is and he's banging on the door to wake Tobias up. David, <clears throat> excuse me, back to you on the roof. What are you doing? You're still bluffing um, on your radio. Can I scan the other rooftops? Um, given I like, can't see anything on that rooftop, can I just scan the other rooftops? Sure. Make another perception check. Yeah, nothing. Super dark, super late at night, right? Either either you can't see anything because you've got those old farmer man eyes and you didn't eat enough carrots, or there's nothing to see, but you can't. But you, you're unable to tell. All right. How tall? How tall are these buildings in comparison to the rest of the area? Each of these are four flights, uh, four stories, right? They're apartment buildings. So you know, pretty much everything else in the town, everything you can see in this red line. Almost everything there is two stories at best, right? Most of these are homes, so the church is probably a little bit bigger. There aren't many businesses inside of here. So in theory, you can see pretty much everything in the town, right? And again, your eyesight would be the, the or your scope would be the deciding factor. But in theory, you could see all the way across to this warehouse over here or the other area where uh, Emmy and, and uh, Trojan are at the moment. <laughs> Can I check out the base of the building that I saw movement in? Yeah, 100%. You mean specifically focus in and see what you can see in that building? Yeah, and see if anyone's coming out of it. Um, yeah, let's have you make another perception check. Oh, yeah. So you do see, um, you don't see anyone coming out, but you're pretty sure you see movement inside of this building, right? And there's no lights in there. Um, and it's an exact mirror of the one you've been in. But you kind of get the feeling you see people milling around inside of the uh, the doorway. 
All right, let's cut back to, while, while I leave you with that, let's cut back over to Emmy and to um, Trojan. <clears throat> Excuse me, you're heading down this way. Can I have you guys make one final perception check? Finally. Oh, finally. So um, you two are both telling each other to be careful and to watch out, to stop making so much noise. Pull over onto the right map. But as you, as you get here, right, um, two guys come around. Like, you're kind of like walking up to the building. You've realized, uh, Trojan, that you can't see anything. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as you're kind of getting where, you, like where you'd climb up onto the building, two guys in black fatigue step out, and they've got guns pointed at you, and they've got you flanked on either side. So and they start barking at you, right? And it's the whole kind of like shock and awe, right? And they're telling you, like, put put your weapons down, get down on the ground. Um, and they're trying to intimidate you into complying. So what what are your gut reactions? Like, what are your initial kind of like what what would you do? Uh, my hand comes off the gun and I, <clears throat> my arms are up in the air kind of shaking because I'm already nervous and anxious at this point. <laughs> so seeing you comply, they start shouting at you again and like, you know, doing the whole kind of pointing with their guns, like on your knees, on your knees, right? So they're telling you like, now you've dropped your gun or take, you know, like disarmed yourself. Next step for them is get on your knees, hands behind your heads. Trojan, what are you doing? Well, I didn't have it out still, and I just had my hand on it. Oh, oh, my mistake. So what do you? What do you so again, like the, the, these guys aren't aren't playing, right? So um, they yeah. are are here to raid the town, right? At least as far you know, as far as you can tell. So tell walk me through again what you're up to. I'm going to turn and look at Trojan because my hands are already up. Oh, so your hands are up in the air though, right? Yeah, they're just okay. like shaking nervously because I'm already <laughs> anxious. But poor Emmy. Trojan, what are you up to? Call us a cucumber, the influencer. So I... Yeah, I put my hands up, but there's not much I can do. All right, so they're telling you both to get down on your knees. Um, are, are you going to resist that, or are you going to be okay kind of like, you know, get hands and knees, hands behind you that you're – sorry, on your knees, hands behind your heads. Are you two going to comply all the way? I'm probably going to start frantically asking, what do you want? Who, who are you? What do you need? Just babbling at this point, trying to – I don't know, just taking time, I guess. Sure. So there's no, there's no, uh, from their perspective, there's no, they're not here to talk to you, right? So they're just like, you know, shut up, shut up on your knees, shut up, stop talking, stop talking. So they, again, they have no uh, interest in really discussing anything with you. And then I guess I'm slowly working my way down to one knee and then, uh, the other. Perfect. All right. Trojan, are you complying or are you going to be uh, are you are you being a tough guy over there? Yeah, for the time, I'm going to comply. All right, perfect. All right, let's cut back to uh, uh, Battersby. So you're on the apartment building and you can see movement in the other apartments opposite. What, what are you doing? Is it, have they got torches or are they not got torches? No, they don't seem to have torches, but you're, you're sure at this point you can see just the shadows moving inside, right? There, there are people inside. You can't tell how many, but you can tell they're kind of moving backwards and forwards inside of the lobby of that building. Right. Um, what are the lights like in the town? You know, there's... Um, so... The, the the power grid here has been a little bit spotty, right? So there are lights in the town, right? There aren't that many houses that still have uh, lights, but there are some street lights in the town, right? So you can see kind of different points of light around the town here and there, but it, it's it's not everywhere. And again, it's not the houses. It just tends to be, you know, like, a, again, a warehouse or, a, you know, the, there's a police station up here that had a light outside of it. There's still some over here. 
the Georgetown Police Department. They had like a light outside. So there's still some stuff going on and some store lights and some kind of like buildings lights, but it's not, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty spotty. Can I tell where, uh, can I see over to where Steve is? You, you can't see him. Like he's been, like he's been hidden from you for a while. He's like crossed over two, three streets, right? But he, he's kind of over at Toby's house. He's still trying to wake Toby up at the moment. Okay, so I can't see them. Okay. Um, the door I came through to get up here. Yeah. What's it like? Um... Uh, you know, imagine any good superhero movie, right? It's just like a, a stairwell that takes you to the top and it's like a standalone door that you open the door and it takes you out onto the roof, right? So the door itself is metal and it's hardened. It's unlocked at the moment because people have been coming and going onto the roof of these buildings, but it's it's as much of a, a again, like a standalone kind of almost like a TARDIS at the top of the uh, the building that you walk out of that was the stairwell. Does that, does that make sense, Matt? Yeah, and is there a um, uh, is there a fire exit off the top of the building? Yeah, you can get down the side over on the right hand side, like like uh, more more up towards this end. If you can see where I'm pinging, you'd be able. There's a fire exit that leads down. So if I openly start sniping from the roof, I cannot protect myself from getting overwhelmed. So Correct. Basby will... How many other people have radios? Do we know in the tank? I, you know, may, maybe... Um... Let's call it eight or nine, right? There aren't that many people because, again, like these guys haven't been thinking like a military outpost, right? These are just people trying to survive. So they're not really thinking about walkie talkies all that much. Yeah. Plus, we have no idea how much stuff those people took. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, better be snooping then. And just keep an eye on what the guys are doing because if he opens fire, then he's outnumbered and he can't stop them from flanking two directions uh so he'll wait and see what he's got as an opportunity does he if, if these guys are doing this route yeah yeah does it take them like 20 minutes can i see that car coming and drive around no i luther was like coming in really slow with all the lights off right and so that again there's still enough kind of between you and, and luther like enough buildings and roadway so you can make a possession check, but you'd have to like feel free to make one, but you'd have to get a wild success to have seen him. That's good. Um, can I have a scan around anything here? Um, regardless, um, just to get an idea of my bearings behind me. I, I know obviously they're right in front of me. Is can I see any groups? No. Or uh, anything out of the ordinary in this area? No, in it, it looks all pretty normal, right? Pretty quiet. And again, it's fairly late. And most people have gone to bed. So there, there doesn't seem to be any movement or anything going on that you can see. Okay. Um, well, I'll stay off of the... I'll stay off of the radios and um, see what, what comes out of the buildings. Okay. Are there any extra cars here that weren't here the last time I was here? No, not that you can see. No, nothing again. Like you didn't really pay that close attention, right? But they're like it all seems to be fairly normal. But I should point out again, you still you still haven't seen the guy that's supposed to be on the other rooftop, right? So that and I know you're looking and you're kind of like watching what's going on, but that's still kind of a weird sign, right? The fact that you haven't been able to see anyone. And there should be a guard there. Well, there's multiple guys here, and there shouldn't be multiple guys here. Yeah, that bothers me more than the also the missing guy. I just also, put two and two together, and we got a shit show waiting to happen. Um, yeah, I'll just wait and see where they go when they come out. Let's have you make uh, a perception check. No C mods. Uh, 
So you're on the roof overlooking. Let me go to that other view. You're on this roof, <clears throat> and it might be even easier to watch it on the stream so I can zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you've been on the roof over here. You've been looking over there. You hear the, some clanking from the door behind you, right? So the perception check was you, you do hear someone kind of coming up, right? So someone's like, you know, whether they're on the same floor as you or whether they're coming onto your floor, you know someone's going to be coming through that door fairly quickly. Okay, hiding and pulling out. And screw it. This carbine. Do you have your sniper's rifle or your hunting rifle as well? Yeah, I had both. Yeah, fair comment, fair comment. All right, so we're leaving you there. All right, so Luther and Bull, you've just turned up in the town. There's no one at the church, right? Again, things are kind of winding down. Maybe there's still one or two people at the church that's putting uh, the chairs away, but you pretty much turn back up in town. What, what, what is your plan? And you don't know where anyone is at this point, by the way, unless, you've, unless you're uh, retconning. You haven't spoken to anyone. You kind of pulled into the town in silence. What, what's the next steps for you? <clears throat> How's he looking? Who? Which one? Oh, Cox. Uh, Cox. He, completely unconscious, right? He might be bleeding out, in fact, right? If, you, if you're not going to provide him any medical, you, you know enough, Luther, from, like, wounds. But if you don't provide him some kind of medical care, he's going to be dead by the time the sun comes up. Uh, do I know who in town is, like, our town doctor or medic? And, like, where their house is? No. No, that hasn't come up, right? So as far as you're aware, there actually isn't anyone, right? So that, that's not something that Steve brought up. It's not something that was ever volunteered. Maybe there's a doctor, maybe there isn't. Maybe there's a nurse somewhere, maybe there isn't, but you don't know about it. Oh, you no, know where you would? No, well, I, actually, Ball probably would. Do I recognize who's at the church that might have some medical training? So oh, is there anybody at the church or is it empty? He just said people put chairs. A couple of people putting chairs away. So I forgot Bull was a resident. Oh. So Bull does know, and I, I did I, I did mention it this evening, right? But it, it's not been all that common knowledge. There is an older guy, Bob, who was a, a field medic, a, a Marine, right? So you could go to his house and he would probably be able to help you like patch up again, like, I gotta say these names, patch up Cox. So um <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say, for the sake of argument, the Bob's house is over here by the florist somewhere. If you can see where I'm pinging, so this would be where where. Um, and again, Bull would know that from being a resident. The Bob's probably the closest thing to a medical uh, practitioner in the town. Yeah, but given the circumstances, I'm gonna ask uh, the people who are still there if they've got some some med stuff stashed in the church. Go get them or get me some towels or whatever so we can start patching him up because he's looking pretty grisly. Yeah, there is a first aid kit in the church, right? It's still hanging on the wall, right? Surprisingly after, like, with all of the sickness and everything that's gone on, first aid kits haven't actually been that useful, right? They didn't help with the dog flu. So there's still a, a, a fairly well-stocked med kit in the, or a first aid kit in the uh, church. Bandages, like, you know, Tylenol, some gauze, the antiseptic, all that kind of good stuff, some needle and thread if you wanted to, uh, uh, give someone some stitches if you felt that brave. So there's enough there that if Bob's available, if you can find him, there's probably enough there to Bob. Well, Bob would have a better chance with all of this first aid stuff. Want to run and get Bob or? No, I've got some first, I just realized I do have some first aid training. Um, I'm going to grab the med kit and try to patch up the bleeding and if there's some painkillers in there, give him a little bit. What well, one of the people in the church is happy enough to try and run and grab Bob for you, right? So they, they, they see the blood and they're a little bit freaked out by it. So there's an older, you know, like a fifties ish woman that says to you, Hey, like if you both want to stay here, I'll go and see if Bob's can come and help. Thank you yeah. kindly, man. So and I'll probably send the other lady tell her to go home. Yeah. Yeah, she she's very she puts down a, like she's been drying some like cutlery or whatever. She puts it down and just like backs out of the room without saying anything else to you. Only too happy to get to you know back to the night. All right, so you're you're patching up. Let's have you make a first aid check. Um, he's not screaming. Who Cox? 
Yeah. Oh no, I, I don't think he needs to be. Does it? If I can put him on. Hold on. Oh no, it does a check first. That's right. Okay, good. I want to stop from bleeding and become awesome. more stabilized. He already will. <laughs> yep. No, he's good. So, um, he, he, he you know. Had you not done that, he, he'd have bled out, right? But you've got him in a church pew. You're able to apply pressure, put some wounds on there, right? And, you know, he's probably still got a bullet lodged inside of him somewhere, but you can see at least one of the bullet wounds just went all the way through, right? It was in his shoulder. It kind of missed his body armor, and it went. It looks like it was a clean wound. So you can't be sure about the other one that's in his side, but you've done you've done what you can to stabilize him. And, he, he you know, if you had to guess, he's not going to die this evening. I'm good. Medium in that for now. All right, so what do you? And again, you don't know this, but Battersby is just about to meet someone unpleasant up there. Um, Emmy and Trojan are over here dealing with two guys that have just kind of like you know spread, jumped out of the dark. You've just kind of like you know you're helping Cox. What what are you doing, Luther? Still no uh, chatter on his radio though, right? You you hear Battersby, right? So Battersby's been talking to. Wait, do you mean do you mean Cox's radio? Right. Nothing. Like, absolutely nothing. Hmm. I don't know anything's going on. And I said to, uh, I guess, I guess I never really said to radio if anything fishy was going on. But uh, nobody's really had a chance. So I guess I'm going to, I'm going to keep watch. So if they're tending to him, I'm going to uh, head to the front of the church and keep watch. Fair comment. All right, so you're at the church. Let's switch back to um, Emmy and Trojan. So these guys are, um, they're, they're kind of shouting at you, right? And, and again, they're, they, they're asking you or telling you to put your weapons down. So did you, hey, Matt, welcome back. Did you comply with that or do you still have your guns on you? Because they're going to frisk you and find you if you didn't give them up. I mean, my hands were up. So if they're telling me to throw weapons down, then I probably unshouldered the rifle and uh, pulled my pistol out instead of. Yep, that, that's what they wanted you to do. What, what about you, Trojan? Yeah, I, I put my weapons down. All right, so these two come up behind you, and they, uh, they tell you to put your hands behind your back, right? You've dropped your weapons, and one of them's pulling out those little kind of nylon zip ties, right? So their plan... You know, if they're going to execute you, they're going to great lengths to execute you and they just could shoot you right now. So it looks like they're trying to take you prisoner. Okay. Um, once they've zip-tied me and they're in front of me, um, if they're just standing there, I'm going to reach under my coat and grab my walkie-talkie and hit the button. Okay. And I'm just going to start trying to ask questions. Just like not maybe not nonsense, but I'm gonna you know, like try to get them to talk. Like, I guess mm -hmm. I thought you guys were coming back tomorrow. Why are you guys here right now? So they they just start screaming at you again, like guns waving in your face. Shut up, bitch. Shut up. Like stop talking. We're the ones asking the questions here. So you've got your walkie-talkie in. Um, they grab they grab you like they they've put the the zip ties on your wrist they pull you and trojan up by the um by by the wrist kind of get you on your feet but they're pushing their guns into your back and they're trying to get you to walk in this direction away from the town right so it doesn't feel like they're moving you back in but battersby and presumably luther had a radio tuned to the town you guys just heard that steven devised it too yeah so you all just heard that. Now, that's kind of bad news for you, Battersby, because that noise came just as a couple of guys appeared out of the, the building, so or out of the roof. So there's a couple of fellas that... Let me just put them on screen. Oops. Yeah, the, these... Yeah, not, 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 not exactly what you would have wanted, Battersby, um, but just what I was hoping for. So these two guys, yeah, they were come, They also have night vision goggles on, right? So they're coming out onto the roof, and Battersby, just as they come out onto the roof, the radio goes off, and you hear all this screaming and shouting, and it's their kind of like their comrades, and it's Emmy on the other side. <clears throat> Excuse me. And 
your position is given away, right? So as they come out, they see exactly where you are, kind of triangulating on the noise. But also they got infrared on. So suddenly you just showed up like a, a, a Christmas light on their screen or on their viewpoint. I was just ready to shoot anything that came out the door. Um, but okay, um, I'm, I'll open fine. So, all right, perfect. So let's. Um, so before you do that, <clears throat> um, Luther, what what are you and Bull doing? Because you just heard that noise as well. You don't really know where it came from. You don't know where Emmy or, or Trojan are, but you recognized uh, Emmy's voice, and then you heard like this screaming and shouting of like, "Shut the fuck up!" On you, like, stop talking and keep moving. The hell was that, Luther? Uh, I think that's the trouble. The trouble is here. Out there? Say that again. You see anything out there? No, but I heard something on the radio. While I'm patching up Dick Boy here, I'm gonna maybe try slapping him a little bit, seeing if I can get him conscious again, try and wake him up. Let's have you make another first aid check. First aid for a slut. It's a funny, funny story I heard from my grandfather. That my grandmother passed out in the bathroom, and it's the first time he's ever hit her, trying to slap her and wake her up. To, to, like when she was passed out? Yeah, she passed out for some reason in the bathroom, and I don't remember why, but he came across her and just gave her a couple slaps, just trying to get her up, make get her attention and all that stuff. It's the first time he ever hit her. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I'm so sorry, but you're you're you were pissed. You passed out. <laughs> so I, I I did that with a roommate once, like a guy, right? Not a girl, but the same thing. Like he'd passed down, we thought he choked on his own vomit, right? So it was that whole kind mm. of like, hey, I'm gonna keep slapping you till you come around. And he was super <laughs> fucking angry. And the next day he had like it was my roommate, he had like or my housemate, he had like red hand marks all over his face. It was glorious. <laughs> Um, that's when I miss having a camera. I kind of wish there was cameras available. Obviously, there were cameras, but like you didn't carry a camera on you in the oh, '90s yeah. like you did with your phone today, right? Like I, I miss some oh, choice yeah. pictures. All right, so <laughs> you're able to bring him around a little bit, right? So he's stabilized. So you're able to again, like, slap him into consciousness, right? So we're gonna cut away and go back to Battersby. Battersby, they haven't come through the door yet. I hadn't realized that you were waiting to just shoot them like that. And again, like I'm not having them just like like stump you like that. But your radio did give away your position. So these guys that were just about to come through, they heard what's like they heard your radio and they heard all the kind of the shouting. That they're they're not coming out at the moment. So you realize there's two guys with weapons inside kind of a concrete, again, like a standalone rooftop doorway. And they know where you are. With that, that is me. Do you have a response? Are you there, by the way, Matt? Yeah, I'm here. All right, perfect. I didn't know if you'd have to step away with the dog. So uh, any response to that, Matt, before I cut back? Uh, I can't really do anything. I'll just move. Well, I mean, they haven't come out of the door. Um, I will leave the radio um just on the side and i'll move off center of the of the door so i don't i'm not exactly where the radio sound came from i'm still just pointing the gun towards the door so make a stealth check You're able to do it. Did you say you were leaving your radio? Did I understand that? You were leaving your radio behind you to distract them? Uh, the radio will be right in front of the door where it went off. So it, if it goes off again, it's still in the same place. And I will move over to the side so that I'm not where the radio went off. Yeah, so you're, you're able to do that. So you're, you're able to leave the radio where it is. Emmy, presumably you're keeping the button pressed down on that. And these guys are still shouting at you. So, yeah, you can leave that radio. It's still making noise. These guys presumably are going to think you're still with the radio, but you just move, maneuvered into a different position. As long as I can hold the button down, I'm doing it. All right, perfect. Without giving it away. 
Yeah, they're not really paying much attention, right? The, to, to your surprise, they seem to be shepherding you you two out. Like, again, like, you know, almost like there's a mission successful, right? Or they're taking you to a rendezvous point or something. But they're heading away with you two, and they're still shouting at you, right? Now, it's not crazy shouting because they're not trying to give away their position. But they're, they're you know, they're, they're, again, shock and awe trying to keep you off balance, so that's still that can still be heard by these guys that seem to be in the rooftop with Battersby and Luther. What is yours and Bull's responses? And by the way, uh, Bull Cox is now um, conscious. You have a you have a conscious Cox on your hands. So um, <laughs> what what, what Wake the beast? Yeah, <laughs> waking the kraken. Yeah. So you, you have uh, you have him. What what are you two doing? What are you and Luther doing? Is he ready to talk a little bit? Yeah, I'm gonna tell you I got him up. So what's the plan for the night for you guys? So let's have you make whatever check you think is appropriate, like an intimidation check. I don't think charms. I, I think intimidation yeah. is probably the only thing that would work, or maybe deception if you think of a lie to get him to tell you a lie or to tell you the truth. I'll be yeah. doing that, you know, saying that while I'm, you know, polishing my gun and. <laughs> you know, I, I'd give you a a, a plus one. Actually, I'll give you a plus two, right? I mean, like, he, he's been badly wounded. You, you you know, he could die at any moment. He's not an easy man to break, but, like, I mean, th this is as, probably as dark oh, as his moments have ever gone. So I'll give you – what did you get? Oh, I got a bad. Oh, fuck you. He looks at you and he just laughs through the blood and he's kind of like, oh, you Texas Rangers. Like, okay, where, where, where's Tonto? Not interested. So he, he's – Just turn for those. I, I know I should have – there's no backtrack. Is it after the fact, right? Oh no, you can absolutely. You can just click the one, and it will re-roll that dice for you. Best rules: you already let go of the piece. <laughs> so you can re-roll the one. Yeah, just click the one in the the little the icon of the dice. Oh, okay. And then you say yes. Yep. No, oh, look at that. Oh, All right. All right. After he spits blood. Unfortunately, try and charm. Yeah, so... It, it, oh, good, cop, good cop, bad cop. <laughs> well, because I'm going to say, look, I healed you up. I stabilized you. You're alive. If you're honest about this, what's what what's the play here? He, he laughs at you through cow. some blood. You give me something. He laughs at you again through... And he's still producing a lot of blood because I feel like he's been talking through blood the whole of the session, right? But he, he kind of laughs at you and he says... You guys are just so fucked. And that is where we're calling it an evening. So when we come back next time, Battersby is Holy about... Holy shit, it's been two hours already? It... It you do such a good job. Well, I, thank you very much. I take that as a compliment. But yeah, it's two hours. Of... <laughs> oh, Bunyan, look at you with your little charm attempt. That one didn't work out. All right, so when we come back next time, Battersby is about to go at it with two highly trained troops. Steve is about to head back his way with Tobias or is heading back his way with Tobias. So we'll see if the cavalry gets there in time to help. Uh, you two have Cox here and Luther is going to have to figure out if and how he's going to try and help where this noise is coming from. And Trojan and uh, Emmy are being escorted like Elvis out of the building by a couple of these troops. And I ready my hatchet and start pushing into a gash he has. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, listen, guys, I'm, I'm actually in Mexico next week. So, so bad as me. I won't be available for Alcatraz, but I don't know if you want to do uh, a weapons test or if you want to do something else instead. But just letting you know, I won't be out then. So if we want to come back that following week, which is, I think, the 21st, like that 21st, 22nd for Battersby, I don't know if we want to go back to Alcatraz then so we don't get too far away from it or come back to this, but Battersby and I can figure that out along the way. Make sense? Yeah, that also works. I'm so, I, I love being a player just as much as I love running the sessions. So either way is good for me. I know I have plans for you next time. Excellent. I like that a lot. <laughs> All right, and then just and I, I unfortunately, I, don't, I, I can't stick around much this evening. Um, but I, 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 so zero at some point. So let me let me just say one more thing. I just really enjoy playing with you guys, right? So I've been playing with Matt for a while now, right? But I very much enjoyed this group, this Monday night group. So at some point. I, I, you know, he's very modest about all of this, but Zero has also written a game, right? And so I'm in his Discord server 
So at some point, I'd love for him to run a game or for one of us to run a game for him. But I think, you know, and I'll run this forever, right? Like, make no mistake, I'm not trying to get out of this. But, you know, I, I, I'm happy to do Distemper Monday night in perpetuity. But if we want to switch this up and try out other games or, like, you know, do anything else along the way, again, I just very much enjoy playing with you guys, right? So I'm willing to try other games. Other people do, like, like GM. Uh, but I, at some point, I'd love to try Zero's game if you're up for a Zero. Oh, you, you know I am. <laughs> So would you prefer one of us to run it for you or would you prefer to run it for for us? What would you – I, 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 I bought the rules today, but I haven't even cracked them open. Yeah, I, I really don't like to uh, – or at least for now, I don't want to DM it because I want to see how other people, like, interpret the rules and how they, you know, how they, how they mold it so I can see, okay, how the mindset works on the players and the GM and everybody. Perfect. That makes sense. So – I, I um I, I'm gonna take a look at the rules and see um it, I, I I not not how complex it would be but see if I can do it justice right and at some point we'll take a break from this to run a campaign in that and then again I I, I I'll keep going with this forever but I I also want to throw the invite open at some point like again let's get let me get these rules finished and let them get them out there but at some point other games are totally on the cards with you guys all make sense yeah. Beautiful. All right. A anything else from anyone else? Yeah, one of us, one of us. Um, anything else from anyone else before we drop? No, I'll keep doing this in perpetuity. I love this. This is great. Yeah, me too. I'm very much enjoying this. And I, I actually feel I've really gone to – the rule book's almost finished, right? Like th this iteration of it, right? I feel that all the links are almost there. The tables are almost there. There's just, you know, probably a few hours more work. But I, I really feel as – as close to being done with this as I've ever felt. So much appreciated because a lot of this is down to the, the all this play testing that we've been doing. So thank you. Well, I had a quick conversation with Matt. I think it was yesterday. And um, if he wants to catch up to speed or anything about that, I'm more than happy to chat more about that because I think I was talking to him about lasting wings again, maybe bringing that into a little bit more of the forefront, but I'm sure you're ready to wrap up seven and maybe push a lot of stuff off to version eight. <laughs> Bingo, right? And and so like it's some like we're so close to getting to the version one point right? Being able to put that out there. Yeah. But again, like I, I I'm gonna finish locking these rules and I already have a I forgot I'm I'm sharing at the moment. So I have a, a Google Keep that I've already started going through with like, you know, ideas and things that need to be in version eight, right? So at some point like we'll get there. So save up all your glorious ideas for stuff that's missing from this because at some point again version seven will be locked and we'll do a play ball playtest and then get version eight. Hopefully version one point oh knocked out. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, look, guys, I, got, I, I have a date night, a late night date night with my wife, so I'm not going to keep her waiting any longer. Um, thank you all. You've been fucking awesome, and I shall look forward to speaking to you all when I get back from Mexico in, in next week. All right, sounds good. Thanks, guys. Good night. Yeah.